I remember coming across um, a picture. It was a, an electron micrograph of DNA from an early embryo. What the picture showed was just you could follow the trace of the DNA and you would see all of these little bubbles in the DNA. And I just became intrigued by this idea that, you know, I wanted to know what was happening before that bubble started. The process of cell duplication in which a mother cell divides to become two genetically identical daughter cells is well known and even taught in schools. But before cell duplication occurs, a lesser known step takes place, namely that of DNA replication. This is the infinitely precise moment when our genome duplicates itself. Professor John Diffley, this year's winner of the Louis Jante Prize for Medicine, was always drawn to science and was particularly interested in this biomechanical mechanism. When I was a young boy, I was very influenced by the, um, the space race, by, by um, everything to do with uh, outer space and science fiction and um, science fact. And so I think from a very early age, I was very excited about um, science in general. And it also happened to be the only thing that I was ever any good at. And so uh, it was... <laughs> It's sort of just those two things work together and I've ended up being a scientist. It's sort of, I never really was going to be anything else, I suppose, in a funny way. John Diffley was born in New York, but in 1990, he chose to continue his research in the English countryside just outside London. It was at Clare Hall Laboratory that he found a team specialized like him in DNA replication and repair and a good scientific environment for taking his research forward. I was impressed by John already at that stage. Uh, so I, offer, I fortunately had the ability to offer him good resources. And I think he liked the place here. He realized that uh, here he could really get on with his science uh, in a very efficient way. And that's exactly what happened. Although many people around the world are interested in how DNA replication is controlled, because that is really the difference, let's say, between a normal cell and a cancer cell. Uh, how do you control replication? Uh, John has uh, worked out the basic mechanisms, control mechanisms for this. Uh, so it's really a big step forward. Uh. The mechanisms behind the duplication of DNA, those very first instance called the replication origin, that is what John Diffley and his teams discovered and managed to reproduce in a test tube, as the saying goes. A unique, crucial process that can occur only once per cell cycle. The slightest error in DNA initiation can create cells with anomalies. Behind the scientific comprehension of this biochemical process lies the ultimate goal, understanding the origin of diseases such as cancer. My lab now is mostly trying to under really understand the process in atomic detail, but there's another part of my lab that's trying to understand how what we've understood about replication might actually be misregulated in cancer cells because one of the fundamental features of, of all cancer cells pretty much is that they have what's called genomic instability. So they, they mutate at very high rates. And that's, of course, one of the major problems in thinking about cancer therapies is that um, because they mutate at a very high rate, anytime you have a, a new drug that is effective, very soon they, the cancers develop resistance to it and you then go th have, have to, to go through the problem again. That's something that we're, we're interested in trying to uh, understand in more detail. And then we obviously need to add the cells, so they've been growing on these kinds of plates overnight. So we basically pre-grow them on a plate and then put them into the culture. I really like kind of exploring new things, finding out how things work, and I also like it in science that once you've opened one door, like once you've answered one question, that there are just many more questions after the next one. During the studies, it's of course more about uh, the quality of the teaching that you're looking for, and then later on, basically starting with the PhD, you're looking more for what is the lab actually working on, so you're actually focusing on one project and 
making sure you actually find a project that you like. I think this is the best lab to go and do biochemistry in the field of replication. So I knew exactly what I wanted to work on and basically I just had to find a lab that fulfills the requirement for what I want to do and John's lab was just the perfect fit for that. And when I was writing up my thesis, you know, doing re literature research about replication and what is known about it, John's name came up over and over again. I think, I mean, half of my references during the introduction were from this lab. So I thought, okay, if you want to look at work on replication in a more mechanistic way, this is definitely the lab to come to. John Diffley was appointed director of Clare Hall Laboratories in 2005 and in 2015 became associate director of the Francis Crick Institute, a multidisciplinary research center which aims high and promotes young talent attracted to science. You have to think obviously a lot, you have to write proposals, you have to do experiments, analyze data, um, you have to teach tutor students, um, prepare posters, also some graphic design is also involved. It's really up to you how you, how much energy you put in, how you organize your project, and obviously how much you get out of it. The academic path uh, um, brings you to do is uh, to focus on your own research project uh, when you're a PhD student and when you are a postdoc, and uh, switching from being uh, a postdoctoral researcher to then uh, opening a lab is definitely an interesting experience. I think it's a great time. I mean, sci it's so important that people go into science. Um, it teaches you, you know, to be independent, to be challenged intellectually. Um, so even if it's not your career for life, it can teach you a lot of very valuable life skills, you know, not just about being a scientist, but applicable to many areas of, of life. Um, so I think it's great. And, you know, we're, we, we're, we have this freedom in my lab. I can, we can work on whatever we like. You know, when I was a PhD student, there was no alternative to an academic career. If you started off doing a PhD, you either went into academia or you drove a taxi. Um, and there were times when I wasn't sure which one I was going to do. Um, but I think now, and this is one of the things that in the Crick we're really going to try and, and develop, is there are many, many more kinds of jobs that really need people with science background. And so I, I think in a way it's kind of a good time to be going into science. In the second half of 2016, John Diffley's teams and the Clare Hall Laboratories will join the London Centre, thus placing the various laboratories all under one roof. Above all, the Francis Crick Institute will bring together complementary skills and competencies to their mutual benefit. Yet another challenge, but also an opportunity for everyone, leaving the hushed English countryside for the effervescence of the city. When I talked to the students in the beginning, I, I quite like this quote from Donald Rumsfeld. This all had to do with weapons of mass destruction. And he was talking about uh, there being known knowns. These are the things we know we know. Then there are known unknowns. These are the things we know we don't know. Uh, but then the really difficult bits are the unknown unknowns. And these are the things that you don't know you don't know. I think that's close to his quote. Um, and I think science is, is really about that unknown unknown thing. And you know, there's no way of knowing something unless there's a process for it. And so I think trying to get students to really understand that um, there is this process that if you sort of believe in and you have a good question, you will ultimately be able to discover unknown unknowns. Uh, so that's, I think that's really what I try to transmit to them.